Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, All In Crypto here and welcome back guys for another daily cryptocurrency market update. Before we jump into this jam-packed update uh, where we're going to be looking at yesterday's events, of course we got the CPI for the US, we'll look at how this affected the markets. Where I think we're at technically uh, in regards to Bitcoin, which of course is a kind of broader representation of the overall market. Generally, Bitcoin is that tide that rises and sinks all ships. That is still true. Um, today. And then we're going to look at a number of interesting things. We've got more issues within the banking sector. We'll look at inflation globally. Um, we'll talk about a number of things going on now. And I want to play some clips from the US Congressman Sherman, uh, who essentially likens and makes some pretty bold and outlandish claims in regards to the cryptocurrency space and also really highlights the um, dictatorship of the US dollar um, in this clip where he uh, looks at crypto, which apparently is um, comes out of thin air. And then he says, so does the US dollar, but we're the US government, so we can do that. Isn't that interesting? Uh, very beneficial for anybody who um, is part of the US government, but not perhaps for um, people elsewhere. And this is what, just to drop this in there, there's been a hell of a lot of wars and bloodshed over, over the past, um, you know, recent and, and and more broad history so before i get into it all guys if you can do me a massive favor and drop me a like and a comment it really does help me out with the algorithm and if you're not already subscribed and you don't want to miss uh, these daily market updates please do consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell where are we at well yesterday's main event was indeed the cpi for the united states now it came in at 4.9 we did expect and we gave a bit of a rundown of what we thought was going to happen the markets to enjoy a lower print than the previous one, even if it was slight. And that was the initial reaction. You know, if we drop right down to the hourly, you can see this is when um, the print really came out. And you could see the cryptocurrency market got a boost on the back end of that. And then it sold off very, very aggressively um, and is kind of in the same range that it was going into the CPI print. So it hasn't really done a lot. And I think that, and this is what we said, we said actually the inflationary stats, the more important thing is going to be how do the markets react. And I think the market's reaction represents the print that we got. Because the last one was five, this one is 4.9. It doesn't really show a massive amount of or, or a huge decrease in inflation uh, month on month or year on year necessarily from the prior one that we got. So that kind of leaves the markets in a little bit of a limbo. You guys know that I believe that um, when it comes to the markets, rates have a massive impl implication. This is this concept of liquidity, which the Fed and other central banks are the ultimate manipulator of. And we'll talk about that in just a second. And really what's going on right now is the markets are forward looking and trying to get, trying to sort of figure out the hiking regime, where it's at and where it's going. Um, the dollar didn't really do a lot yesterday, but it's slightly today. Let's take it off the um, hourly and see where we're at. This is support for the dollar, your resistance for Bitcoin and gold, which could look to see a little bit of downside. Now, it's an interesting sort of um, season for the markets in regards to where we're at, it being May. You know, people are going to go on holiday. They could go very low vol and low interest. Um, and that could see some more sideways action. So this was interesting. Today, we have the PPI, which is going to be another inflationary measure. We'll see what this comes out at, also on employment claims for the US. And we'll see how the markets react. Now, you guys know that I believe we have entered a bull market for not just the cryptocurrency space, but also the anti-fiat category broadly, things like gold, silver. Um, and I even think under sideways rates, the stock market could do well. Now, the stock market is a lot of a harder bag. However, you do have similar DNA here across the board um, with not just the stock market, but Bitcoin, gold, you know, one reason that we took a position back into the markets at the start of the year, certainly in crypto, was because we weren't just looking at Bitcoin against the dollar. Remember, this is all stuff that we've looked at before actually point of break. And we were saying, actually, we think Bitcoin's going to do very well. And it's done that. 
and I think it's going to continue to do so, but within any trend or broader market, so whether bull or a bear, you're going to have pullbacks um, or retracements in that trend. And that's what I think Bitcoin is doing around a key level of 30K. 30K has always been an area that we've looked at for a pullback. You know, not only is it significant in regards to prior price action, there's volume build up there. And also there is um, this kind of law and psychological effect of nice big round numbers that comes into play. It sounds very trivial and, and, and simple, but believe you me, go and look at how you interact with nice big round numbers like 30k 25k for example you know these numbers up here um 30k for example here it's it does play out quite often um so this in my opinion is just a a, a pullback the pullback could extend to 25k if i was looking at this and this is what we've said we've said okay if you don't run that low you could be very much set for more upside continuation from here not needing to come back and, and, and grab that 25k as a retest very very common that when you break a um a trend line neckline grind line that you do come back and retest it you'll see it play out time and time again it gives you this kind of second chance and entry that wouldn't be the worst scenario in the world ultimately that would still give us a bull case we know where we're invalidating this this pattern goes out the window and then you look for double bottoms but ultimately we stick by getting back into the market in January. Um, and looking for further upside. And I personally think altcoins are at a great price. So today we've got the PPI. You know, this is really what you're looking for. Do you sort of do a little bit more winding up here and then look for that continuation? Or do you have to come down and do something like this? And of course, we know what the, the kind of bear case is. You run this, then it's very likely you're coming down to new lows. I don't think that's my most probable. <clears throat> it's always a um, possibility, you know, at the end of the day. We do not control the markets. We just speculate on them. Um, and, you know, ultimately we've speculated that actually everybody that's been bearish, certainly in this time period, has got absolutely um, annihilated. We were bearish here, by the way, guys, and only flipped bullish here after getting out of the market. Uh, and we ultimately think that we took our best shot at um, catching the bottom. Uh, and it, it doesn't have to be. We'll see what comes out. Um, but we're ultimately... Believers that crypto is now in a bull market. It's just started it um, and likely to see further continuation to the upside. And this is just a retracement. That's my uh, opinion on the markets. Gold, I think, is very closely linked to Bitcoin. We'll see what happens there. And we've said, actually, take the um, background noise out of the way and just look at the charts on their own merit. And I think you'll uh, come to maybe a similar conclusion to the one that we're at. So today, of course, we've got core PPI. Very interesting. This is global inflation. You can see trending down um, inflation rates across the board. It's quite good, obviously, ex with exception of places like Argentina, uh, Italy, for example, South Africa. The African RAN is getting absolutely killed for anyone that likes FX, Eurozone. Um, and then you've got um, places like the Netherlands, France, and Spain. But broadly, um, it's trending down across the board. We are going to get more banking issues. I do believe this. I think they're going to quiet it down for a period and then it's going to really pop up um, and, and become a major issue. You know, I think the yield curve that we don't think is going to happen till going into next year, potentially, and we've got this window of opportunity with sideways rates. Um, go and look at what the markets do under sideways rates and when the two-year yield tops out. But, you know, the, the banking issue I still think is a big one. This is SoftBank posts a record $32 billion losses at its Vision Fund tech investment arm. Tech's been getting absolutely killed. Uh, tech obviously being a lot more speculative. What you tend to find is these things are very liquid on the way up, but not so liquid on the way um, down. We've got lots of legal things going on right now. Um, we had another congressional hearing with um, a number of actors. We actually reported on the Web3 individual, the, the chief legal officer at Web3 Foundation, who stood in front of Congress in the hearing. I thought that was brilliant. There's lots of active work in regards to um, coming up with regulatory clarity and ensuring that you know nobody misses out or the US doesn't miss out on this technological revolution, which if they continue on the path that they're on and you continue to see people like Mr. Sherman, who actually 
According to Lynn Alden, Brad Sherman's biggest donors are the financial companies and incumbents. So he is batting for the other team and sees Bitcoin and crypto as a threat. This is the problem with politics, um, ladies and gentlemen. If you think that you are living in a democracy, I believe you're mistaken. Um, and that actually it is more of a dictatorship than a democracy. Uh, and we're shown that time and time again by the governments. And if you just listen to, you know, one of his um, initial statements talking about with the US, we can just print money out of thin air. Well, what do we all give up our, uh, time for? What do we all put a huge amount of value on? What do we, you know, need to keep a roof over our head to, 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 to clothe us, to feed us, to keep our family in check, you know, money. Um, and these guys are the great manipulators of it. Uh, and the people that control the financial system are, um, you know, I think it was a Rothschild quote, I, quote, I care not who the uh, president or prime minister is, just who makes the money supply um, and controls the money supply. Um, and they're the people that have the real power. And this has been the case, you can see it in all religious texts. There's always been a, um, and there is, if you look at all religious texts, whether it's to do with usury or whether it's to do with, you know, Jesus driving, driving the... Uh, money manipulators from the temple you know that th th these people have been about for a long time and have a great amount of power but let's listen to a couple of these clips and then i'll love and leave you so today we'll see what happens it's all about market reaction for me now how's the market taking everything yesterday was an okay print markets initially liked it but then sold off and i think that's a lack of conviction with the lack of clarity that that print um, really gave in regards to the fight on inflation. So let's play these clip guys and then I'll love and leave you. Crypto bros make money literally by making money and they've made over a trillion dollars out of thin air. Um, they'll accuse the US government of making money out of thin air. Maybe we do, but we're the US government. Crypto bros make money literally by making money and they've made over a trillion dollars out of thin air. Um, they'll accuse the US government of making money out of thin air. Maybe we do, but we're the U.S. government. Crypto. I mean, you know, if that doesn't get under your skin, I don't know what will. Play the next clip of him talking and likening crypto to the um, organ harvesting industry and the narcotics industry. There's this fear of missing out that we've got to keep up with other countries. You know, Peru is way ahead of us in cocaine production. Uh, China's way ahead of us in organ uh, uh, harvesting. We don't need to keep up on those things and we don't need to keep up on crypto. Uh, as for protecting U.S. investors, investors know, and they certainly know now, that when you send your money to the Bahamas or Cayman Islands, you do not have protection. You could lose it all. And uh, the, uh, uh, the idea that uh, we should tell investors that something's licensed in the United States when it's not only as dangerous for the investors as crypto is, but as harmful to our country as crypto tries to be, um, I, don't, I, I don't see a reason to, uh, to, to do that. I mean, very interesting. Some good comparisons there, I thought. Uh, let's fast forward to uh, his second question. If it'll load, that is. <laughs> anyway, you get the point. Uh, likening crypto to organ, um, the organ harvesting industry and the narcotic industry. Uh, he's then asked a second question, which we will move on to, and then we'll wrap this video up. Isn't a security. No one is convinced of that. Yeah, I think the vast Gary majority. Gary has said uh, that. Gary has uh, said that the vast majority of tokens are securities. And if the industry wants, uh, assure, you know, if they want to know what the rules are, fine. All they have to do is come to Congress and say, please make us a security, and uh, we will do that. Instead, Sam Bankman Fried was here. Uh, doing a host of illegal things for one purpose, and that was to keep the SEC out of crypto. We should not uh, trash Sam Bankman-Fried on the one hand and then pass his bill on the other hand. 
You say that they should come to Congress to set the rules here, but that has proven quite difficult to do, Congressman. Are you optimistic that we will actually see legislation make its way through your committee and then through uh, its counterpart in the Senate as well? What would that be? We hear often it's stable coins that are the lowest hanging fruit. I'm optimistic that if this industry wants real regulation, they can get it. Uh, but they don't. And uh, they will do everything possible, including everything Sam Bankman fried was doing, to stop us from having real regulation of crypto. I mean, that's just complete nonsense. Every single major crypto firm out there is begging and has made an active effort, barring maybe Sam Bankman fried who I believe was a Trojan horse, sent likely by the financial, the traditional financial industry to disrupt and hinder the cryptocurrency market. I mean, look at the look at there's a there's a great image of him sitting on stage with two politicians who have caused so much chaos and destruction and are known fraudsters amongst a variety of other things. Um, and I think that was very telling. But this Ben Sh uh, Brad Sherman um, is indeed backed by his biggest donors are financial companies and incumbents. Very, very interesting um, that this individual is, you know, backed by the traditional financial industry and is fighting so hard against crypto. And a lot of the arguments they make, I think, are just simply nothing burgers. They don't hold much weight. So let's see, guys. Let's see what happens. Um, it's never nice going through pullbacks, but just put this on a within a little bit of context. You know, if you're zoomed in and just looking at the red on your Coinbase, Binance, you know, whatever it is, coin market cap, then, you know, it, 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 it sort of brings up some kind of an emotion attached to it. Whereas if you take a zoomed out view and look at the charts, you know, Bitcoin is still up 77%. And actually, this is just a retracement, in my opinion, off of a key level. Um, crypto is volatile. There's no doubt about that. It's a lot more high beta than the other asset class. Um, this is a sort of trace, a, 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 a retracement off of a key level uh, in a broader uptrend. That's my take on it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you've enjoyed the content, a like is always appreciated. So as a comment, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next.